Hi there, I'm Craig Webb, president of Web Analytics, and this is my economic update for September. Uh, the background's a little bit different because I'm speaking to you from a conference in uh, Denver, Colorado. But the themes uh, are going to be the same. I'm going to be giving you a quick update about what's happening. The reason why this dog is looking a little optimistic and expectant is because this is a month in which I think our hopes are going to start to come true in terms of some better times ahead in construction supply. Uh, every dog and every cat that I know is waiting for the Federal Reserve's Open Market Committee to make its decisions this coming week, uh, particularly on February 18th, uh, to cut interest rates, the, the federal funds rate that they have. The latest that we've been hearing is that a quarter point cut is most likely. Um, a half point is still in the cards, but probably not as likely. Along with the Fed cuts, the other big things I want to talk about today involve how mortgage rates are dropping, some good news from remodelers. Um, one really interesting small increase in uh, sales by our, our, our colleagues uh, trouble continuing with the single and multifamily uh, starts business and how the overall economy is still chugging along. Uh, in anticipation of what the Federal Reserve is doing, uh, we're already starting to see a little bit of action in terms of mortgage rates. In fact, mortgage rates have now fallen to their lowest level since uh, February 2023. And uh, in terms of what remodelers are doing, the Farnsworth Group just came out with its third quarter report. And when it comes to things like leads and inquiries and, and the like, there's been an increase uh, from the second quarter. They're starting to feel good. And in general, remodelers were cautiously optimistic uh, going into uh, this quarter going uh, compared with previous quarters. Uh, an even more surprising number, I think, has to come with a report from the Census Bureau of retail building material and supplies dealers. Now, I've said in the past that this doesn't include everybody, and it certainly misses a lot of pro-oriented dealers. But in terms of places like the Home Depot, Lowe's, hardware stores, paint stores, and the like, it, it, I think it's fairly comprehensive. And you can see that uh, for the first time, in uh, July, we saw an increase in year-over-year uh, -year, uh, sales by this group. And so maybe that's a good sign, too, that some better times are ahead. Now, when it comes to housing, uh, if you were to compare where things were uh, in August compared with July, we have had some declines in uh, single-family construction Permits, interestingly enough, permits are not dropping as much as the others. And we are getting indications that people are getting pull, permits pulled, but they're just sort of waiting before they actually start construction. Um, we are seeing also, uh, when you're looking at the drop in housing under construction, that's in part because cycle times are improving a little little bit for the production builders, but they're not improving all that much for the um, custom builders, perhaps because they're just waiting for cost to change or uh, their customers to start feeling a little better about projects. Now, the multifamily business is the one that's really starting to have a lot of trouble. Uh, their permits are down, their starts are down. The amount of units under construction are down, although even if you compare them with, let's say, May of 2022, we're still busier than we were two years ago. But all indications are that will continue to drop. Um, and when the Federal Reserve does cut its rates, that's probably going to make lending a little easier. And you may start seeing some projects come back into the pipeline, but it will take a while for that pipeline to fill out. Overall for the economy, so far, we're on roughly the same speed as the second quarter, uh, which was a 2.8% growth. We're maybe two and a half, according to the Atlanta Fed's GDP now. That's still better than some economists are thinking. And so the, uh, the economy, once again, is surprisingly strong, I think you could say. Uh, one key indicator that people have been wondering about is are, how are people feeling at home about their finances. And back in uh, July of 2022, when inflation was high, but wage growth was not so high, you started to hear a lot of people getting angry. 
but starting around July of 2023, that, that's dropped. And now we're starting to see a continual widening of that difference between changes in earnings year over year and changes in the consumer price index. Uh, the, the New York Federal Reserve asks people to give an idea of their expectations one year from now financially. And I am wanting to cite two particular months, June of 22 and August of 24. And you can see that the percentage of people who think that things are going to be much better and somewhat better is far more than it was in the past. Now, that said, there still are about 24, 25% of the people answering the question who think their conditions are going to get worse. And that is reflective of the continued bifurcation we're seeing in the economy between the people who are doing fairly well and the people who are, are suffering. Um, overall, consumer spending has really been static since COVID, uh, both on a, on a uh, when you're looking at year over year changes in terms of both actual spending and, and adjusted uh, inflation adjusted spending. And uh, when we go back to the consumer issue, uh, theoretically things are getting better, uh, better enough for the Fed to decide that a rate cut is okay. But shelter costs are still the biggest problem that we're facing out there. And they are just stubborn compared with everything else. And in terms of their contribution to the overall the consumer price index, they are a big, big factor. So, you know, how much lower can we get the inflation rate? Well, that's largely going to depend on housing. And who knows exactly where that's going to go. But right now, we're not seeing indications of dramatic drops in that side. Now, once again, pointing back to where the economy stands, um, another indication of things is our businesses bringing in materials from overseas. And the answer is they're, they're bringing in more than they've been uh, than they were in 2023. Now, there is a belief that um, potential strikes on the East and the West Coast, the first in something like 50 years by the Longshoremen, uh, could be spurring some of this growth in um, this 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 extra rise in uh, shipments uh, uh, over at our ports. But at the same time, we are generally feeling that things are better and that people are believing in the retail world that you're going to go out and buy stuff this holiday season uh, at, at a pretty good clip. Have you begun forecasting for next year? Well, our sympathies on that. Uh, Todd Tomalak of Zonda uh, produced this chart recently where he was looking at consensus forecasts year over year and what they were saying, whereas how housing starts actually turned out. Uh, the general argument that he's making is, is that sometimes uh, we are off the mark when it comes to where things are. And Todd is saying that he thinks that we're gonna have a much different backdrop for building products going into the next few years, but he cautions against you using forecasts that are similar to where you are now. Just don't expect that things are gonna continue on as they are. In fact, Todd believes that we're going to be having a lot of turbulence in the housing market, uh, shifting and pricing labor and distribution. So uh, I look forward to learning more about some of his predictions and, uh, what he sees in these in these sectors. Looking back at 2023, I thought it also was worthwhile to um, out and point out some numbers from the uh, National Hardware and Paint Association's cost of doing business report. It's now available. It has a wonderful collection of really good benchmarks that you can use. And I just wanted to highlight them by looking at a couple of uh, past years. Uh, these studies, the one that came out this year, talks about 2023, the 23 report talks about 2022, et cetera. And when you look at what the LBM dealers reported, and it's, it's like about oh, oh, 30 different dealers representing maybe about 150 different yards across the country, um, gross margins went up in uh, 2022 and even went up again last year. But at the same time, the pre-tax profit margin 
uh, rose in 2022, but is back down below where it was in 2021. Uh, this is likely uh, largely caused by the drop in lumber prices, and um, consequently, uh, you know, when when lumber goes down, things get challenging. I think the economy today is challenging, especially for building material dealers. It's like being on a paddleboard; you're not getting any uh, propulsion from any real strong economy, from consumers buying, from high lumber prices. To get ahead now, you have to provide your own propulsion. So, uh, and I think that's going to continue for a while. I wanna finish with uh, one trend that uh, came from out of Washington recently that um, surprised me and it might surprise you too. And it had to do with where male and female same-sex sex couples live in the United States. Now we hear a lot about Los Angeles and San Francisco and you know the big cities being where the largest numbers are, but they also at the Census Bureau decided to look at percentages of female female households and percentage of male male households in various counties in the United States. And when you're looking at those, you can see that um, Hampshire County in Massachusetts, Richmond, Virginia, uh, for example, shows up on both lists. And um, in, I think in terms of Richmond itself, it's something like five, six percent of the entire uh, population, household population in Richmond, Virginia is same sex couples. Uh, you may see some cities here that you did not expect. And, you know, uh, when you're talking about Buncombe County, North Carolina, where Asheville is located, you know, that may be something that people are thinking, oh, that's a rural area. They wouldn't be there. But actually, there are uh, same sex couples living there, too. And I think that that may be true in a lot more parts of the United States than we're thinking. To close out, slow and steady seems to be the pace that we're all on. The Federal Reserve is definitely going to help. And it's definitely an up. We are going up. We're not going down. And that's a good thing. I hope that you're having a good thing going on right now. And I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak with you today. Uh, once again, I want to thank ECI for sponsoring this webinar. And I look forward to talking with you again next month. In the meantime, uh, just be on the lookout. I'm going to be sending you, or ECI is going to be making available to you the PDF of this presentation so you'll have all the notes ahead. Thank you very much. and.